Many Iowans rely on pharmacists who operate independently or are part of a small community pharmacy chain. This is especially true in rural Iowa, but I'll bet it's true in a lot of other rural states as well. In uh, Iowa, we have over 300 independent pharmacists uh, and many work in multiple rural communities. These pharmacies are small business serving Iowa communities like Muscatine and Sioux City. These pharmacies want a level playing field to compete with anyone, whether that is a big chain or whether it's another independent pharmacy. Yet pharmacists I hear from are being hurt by retroactive, direct, and indirect remunerations, and I'm going to keep referring to that as DIR fees, uh, and uh, they're, uh, they have to work with uh, pharmaceutical benefit managers in regard to those fees, and there's conflicts between them that I hear about all the time, and then this uh, all deals with Part D Medicare plans. Now, what I'm talking about, direct and indirect remunerations and these negotiated fees with PBMs, these are sometimes known as clawbacks. Now, every day seniors go to the drugstore. They probably always pay a copay. These seniors then rightfully believe that they're paying the lowest amount possible. And that is not always the case. After the patient pays and leaves the pharmacy, their Part D Medicare plan or a PBM, pharmacy benefit managers, contacts the local pharmacist to claw back a certain amount paid. And that's where this DIR fee comes in. This action actually lowers the cost of the drug, but the patient doesn't know it. Because of these DIR fees, seniors pay a lot more than they need to for their, for, for their pills they get at the pharmacy. One Iowa rural pharmacist told me DIR fees, clawbacks, are not only costing the patient more in the form of a higher copay, they're also costing that local pharmacy. From 2010 to 2020, Part D Medicare plans and the PBMs increased the DIR fees by over, can you believe this, 104,000%. DIR fees now total over $9 billion a year. Pharmacists, especially those operating independently in rural areas, but particularly in rural Iowa that I hear about, have told me if DIR fee clawbacks do not get under control, pharmacists will not survive. And of course, we hear every, maybe not every day, but we hear quite often about those small pharmacists going out of business and these DR our fees are often cited to us as one of the reasons. So this will then leave Iowans without access to the local pharmacy for medication therapy management and for other care. Now, I have a bipartisan solution to solve this problem that ends DIR fee clawbacks. In 2019, the senior senator from Oregon and I negotiated and introduced a bill that we entitle the Prescription Drug Pricing Reduction Act, also known as grassley Wyden, but I don't even care if it's known as Wyden grassley the grassley Wyden ends DIR fee clawbacks. This will reduce out-of-pocket expenses 
and provide pharmacies financial predictability. This move may even keep rural pharmacies viable. On top of my legislative efforts in Grassley Wyden, I commend the Center for Medicare Services for issuing a proposed rule to end DIR fee clawbacks. I'm not sure that that proposed rule exactly does what uh, the Grassley Biden Wyden bill does, but it still is a step in the right direction, and I welcome that. In welcoming it, I have submitted comments asking Center for Medicare Services to strengthen the proposed provision as much as the existing statute allows. And of course, we ought to finalize that proposed rule without delay. In addition to ending DIR fee clawbacks, I am committed to passing Grassley Widen. I hope now that Democrats worked on Build Back Better last year with provisions that they thought would reduce pharmaceutical drugs, and that doesn't seem to be moving, that they would take a look, instead of going the partisan way, take a look at a bipartisan way of trying to get something done on prescription drugs, and at the same time uh, ending the DIR fee clawback. Uh, it will lower, the, this bill as a whole, besides dealing with the clawbacks, will lower prescription drug costs in a comprehensive manner, and it actually takes on big pharma. And you probably know in this body, there's some people that say we should just leave big pharma alone. But I know that they do wonderful work. I know they have to have their money for research. I know that they have to be able to market their products in a free market way. But when you have these big increases in pharmaceutical uh, price increases, maybe a couple times a year, it's time we do something about it. And besides this clawback provision, grassley widen caps out-of-pocket expenses, eliminates the donor hole, and dealing with these price increases every year, it caps rising prices at the inflation price index. It also brings more sunshine and accountability, particularly to the pharmacy benefit managers. Nobody seems to be able to tell us anything. What goes on between the health insurance companies, the pharmaceutical companies, the PBMs, and the local pharmacists, and then how that affects the consumer. And we ought to be uh, know exactly where those monies goes and what those negotiations are, and Grassley Wyden does something about that. So I urge my colleagues to join Wyden and me in that effort. I yield the floor.